And the war in Iraq is finally over, and thousands of service members are returning home this week as Washington completes its drawdown of U.S. forces. Now, these heroic men and women have been exposed to sometimes atrocities of war. Many soldiers will find it difficult to put the past behind them. Some will suffer from what we call post-traumatic stress disorder, or PTSD. You hear that term tossed around. We've tossed it around a bunch tonight already. It's something that can occur after a traumatic event. People can get an acute stress disorder, ASD, very similar symptoms, and then it goes away. PTSD will persist, and it requires one or more of symptoms from each of the following categories. So we're going to define PTSD for you. One of these symptoms, one, reliving the event through upsetting thoughts, nightmares, or flashbacks. Two, avoiding activities, thoughts, and feelings that remind the person of the event. Three, loss of interest in activities, feeling alone, sort of symptoms of depression. And four, angry outbursts and feeling that one can never relax. We call that hypervigilance. They're on guard all the time. Here with me to talk about this, Ken Schurer, a veteran of the Iraq War who began experiencing symptoms of PTSD shortly after he returned home in 2004. Actor Kevin McKidd plays Dr. Owen Hunt on Grey's Anatomy, and Kevin's character is a former Army surgeon who suffered who served in the Iraq War and suffers from PTSD. And Kevin, I understand you actually went out and interviewed soldiers like Ken to sort of learn about the condition. What, what did you learn? Yeah, you know, when I started on Grey's Anatomy, they offered me this character. I didn't really know what PTSD or post-traumatic stress disorder was, so I had to read, and I started reading books uh, mainly about surgeons who were serving in Iraq. And then I started to interview Army liaison officers who, you know, every soldier gets a chance to access and help them with their sort of reintegration back into everyday life. And I really became hugely sort of interested and moved by, you know, the sacrifice that everyone, that all the soldiers have gone through and what they're living with. You know, once they come back, I realize it takes months sometimes for this, for this condition to sort of manifest itself. It's not an instantaneous right. um, diagnosis, which I thought was interesting. Yeah, it's sort of, it's sort of it, it can happen right after an event or it can happen right after, then go away and then come back. Right. But the common thing can, I think you were telling me during the break, that it's sort of fade, it's a fade in to these symptoms. Yeah, I, uh, when I was, uh, when I first came back from the Iraq war, um, you, you know, everything was still kind of uh, the same. It, you know, nothing had changed. At, I was still at home. Yeah, yeah, well, it, you know, and also back with my unit when we got back. Um, it, but once I got out of the military element, that's when the, all the, the symptoms started hitting. What were your symptoms? Uh, well, one, you know, high anxiety. Um, you know, I was, I was very... Uh, it's like your engine is turned on at a high yeah, clip all the time. You know, like it, you're it, buzzing. And, you know, and when, whenever I was in a crowded place, I, I would get really, really, you know, upset. And we, we, we call I could, it agoraphobia, yeah, is that yeah. the name for that, which is one of the symptoms of PTSD, sure. Yeah, um, you know, and then, you know, I, I found myself also uh, uh, reliving a lot of the re routines that I was doing when I was in Iraq. Uh, Did you, you actually know, act them out? Did you actually have to well, do them to feel better? I, well, one, one activity that I was doing was uh, I would you know, patrol the house at night before I would go to bed. And I would actually do this with a gun in my hand, mm -hmm. you know, just because I, I, I wanted to make sure everything was safe. Did you have family house. that was living with you at that point? Yes. Did they try to discourage you from that, or they freak out and say, Kev, Kev, what's going on, Kev? They, Come on now. They actually, <laughs> they really didn't even know I was doing it because it was uh, when they were all in bed. Right. You know, I, you know. Did uh, you think to yourself it was inappropriate? No. Did you finally, at what point did you know you needed help? Uh, pretty much when when I hit rock bottom, um, you know, I, I really I turned to alcohol a lot um, to common, kind of again, common thing. Yeah, to to kind of suppress the emotion, mm -hmm. um, and I you know I really hit rock bottom and I almost killed myself mm -hmm. because of it. And then someone got their hands on you. And yeah, and that's that's when I knew it was time to. Yeah. Do you, just to get, get out of curiosity, because I've heard this story more times than I can count from mm -hmm. soldiers, and it's always somehow surprising to them. Do you have a message for some of the guys returning home and gals about not letting this happen to them, maybe reaching out for help sooner? Yeah, I would, I would tell everyone that the, you know, when you come home, you know, there, there's going to be change in your lives. And the only way that you can deal with that change is to uh, face it head on, you know, the same way that you would face, you know, an attacker when we're over there. You, you face it head on. And, you know, when you feel that you're in the position where it, it's uncomfortable, back away from it for a little while. And then, and then reassert yourself in that situation to kind of wean yourself back into the world. Now, so. Kevin, your character on Grey's Anatomy has similar symptoms, actually experiences a flashback. 
I guess it's during the night, which mm -hmm. is so sometimes what happens. Let's watch this tape. I think uh, if, if I were treating a patient that had a symptom like that, we call that a hypnagogic hallucination. Mm -hmm. You were actually in a half sleep, half out, and then had a flashback and acted out as though that yeah. were real. And then had all this guilt and shame and anxiety and remorse. Yeah. Uh, I mean, did you talk to guys that had been through something like that? Absolutely. And I think what was interesting when, this, when that episode aired, and it was a few years ago now, and I think you know, PTSD is becoming more, it's great that you and the show are doing this right now. I think it's... To, to talk about it more is to get rid of that stigma and people were fascinated when we aired this episode that this was happening and this was going on it kind of shone a light at that time it was three years so, ago so that was a novel uh, thing at that yeah, point. Yeah I remember the, a lot of the yeah, fans of the show didn't know what this thing well, was. Well there's you know the, there's a long history in the military of not being really uh, mm, proactive about this condition mm -hmm. and but I must tell you I've been practicing medicine long enough to see the arc of what the VA has done with this and they really are going after this condition and trying to do the best. They, they, I mean, they are making a diligent effort to go and treat this thing. And, you know, people like you, soldiers, aren't ashamed of having it. They understand it's a brain condition. And again, to, for my viewers, it's not a brain injury in the way that Cheryl's husband had a brain injury and had PTSD. Those were two things. This is a brain injury in the sense that it changes a little bit of the wiring and the biology in the brain. And uh, the treatment, if you had... Uh, Usually it's group therapy, other guys that have been through this, and some medication, and sometimes some individual therapy. You know, I, therapy. I, try, I tried to um, see a couple of therapists about it, um, but what I found for, for me was hard was to, to relate to somebody who has never experienced well, it. Well, that's why I said it's yeah. usually a group. It's yeah. usually a group of guys that have yeah. been there, and you can yeah. feel like... Uh, well, yeah, no, understood. group ther therapy, no, but I have uh, you know, had conversations with other vets and stuff, and it, it does help. Th that's, that's, yeah. I, I notice you, you shake your head a lot when he says, uh, and someone who's never been through this, right. that that's must have been a frustrating part, trying to <clears throat> connect with these guys and understand them. And right. them saying you could never understand. Well, them. you can't understand. Yeah. I mean, the, the 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 kind of the debt that we owe them for everything they've done is huge. And you know, um, it gave me in my research, it gave me such respect for the the bravery of these guys. You know, th this is the this is the note. As long as you're our soldier sitting here tonight, this is the note that everybody uh, comes to when they deal with you guys, which is. Mm -hmm. Hats off, you know. We, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very uh, much. We, yeah. we, did, we yeah. didn't know, or if we did know, we come to understand it fully. It's just, it's we owe you a debt.